Hello, and welcome to The Libertarian Show. Today, I want to talk about a country named Peru. It's in South America. I'm sure you've heard of it. Um, there's something that's really interesting going on in the country of Peru right now. There was a, uh, there is a presidential election taking place. They had the first phase of voting um, earlier this month, I believe, and they're setting up for a second runoff vote in June, specifically on June 6th, that's going to determine the, uh, the, the winner uh, of the election. Now, the reason I want to talk about the presidential election in Peru is because there is a very um, socialist uh, uh, Chavez Maduro style kind of candidate who's currently the front runner. His name is Pedro Castillo. He is a member of the Free Peru Party or the Peru Libra Party, which is uh, kind of an ironic name because um, the party and Pedro himself are both extremely anti-liberal. It's a Marxist-Leninist uh, party, essentially. Anyway, he's currently the front runner. There's going to be a runoff. There's a strong chance, uh, a pretty decent chance, he might win the election and become the next president of Peru. His policy proposals are very uh, Fidel Castro, Hugo Chavez style, traditional Marxist, Leninist um, economic policies. He, he's, he's, he's repeatedly uh, endorsed the nationalization of major economic sectors, including mining, oil and gas. And he says that the state should have a leading role in the economy. He's very much in favor of planned economics. Um, he's, uh, he's not really a fan of markets or private property. So some people are worried that he, that he could win the election and turn Peru into the next Venezuela. Both people inside and outside Peru have been warning about this possibility. Um, let me, let me quote, uh, something from him. Here's a quote. He said, he recently said, Currently, we live in a capitalist system supposedly renovated in a neoliberal economy imposed since 1993 and which has gone against the interests of a large majority of the country. To change this sad reality, we have to propose radical economic adjustments. This quote tells me that he wants to drastically reduce the amount of privatization in the economy and increase the amount of public government ownership of many large firms and economic sectors. He'll probably also slap a bunch of red tape and price controls on portions of the, the economy, you know, you know, the portions that aren't outright nationalized. Uh, this, of course, necessitates increasing the amount of economic planning and decreasing the amount of market activity in Peru's economy. And the price mechanism would be restricted by him in, in various ways. Um, let me talk a little bit about the Peru Libra Party. What is the Peru Libra or, or Free Peru Party? It declares itself to be socialist and a Marxist-Leninist political party. Wikipedia says that in domestic affairs, pre Free Peru is opposed to neoliberalism and states that their party seeks to rescue the minimized, almost imperceptible and dying state from the subjugation of market dictatorship. Man, that's fucking ironic. <laughs> what a thing to say. Market dictatorship, yeah, and, and, and save the dying state. <laughs> So uh, Free Peru says that when Peru adopted neoliberalism and markets were deregulated, foreign companies uh, assumed control of the economy, exploitation of labor increased, inequality grew, and the country was led to a neo-colony condition. Um, the, naturaliza the nationalization of mines, gas, oil, and hydroelectricity and telecommunications in order to fund social programs is also a goal of Peru Libre. So Pedro Castillo, he's a member of the Free Peru Party. The party itself open embra openly embraces his socialism, Marxism, Leninism. Pedro Castillo forts, uh, faithfully uh, toes the party line. And he advocates those same things, or at least he, he usually does. Um, he's been uh, quoted as, he's been quoted repeatedly as vowing to nationalize a major gas deposit in Peru, as well as the copper mining industry um, and, and several other uh, economic sectors and, and, and large firms. Um, however, he's, he's been having to walk back his rhetoric a little bit as of late since he became the front runner and since, um, um, the Venezuela catastrophe has unfolded, uh, he's tried to, you know, cool off his, his Marxist rhetoric a little bit and to not, you know, scare away too many people. Um, recently he said in a radio interview, he said that he rejects the national nationalization charges aimed at him. And he, uh, he says he, he doesn't want to nationalize the economy. That's what he says. So he's kind of talking out of both sides of his mouth, depending on who he's talking to. 
Um, I've heard I've heard some people say and and read some people write that Castillo won't do a bunch of nationalizations and that he won't do a bunch of anti market red tape and price controls. I think I think they're mistaken. I think that's exactly what he will do if if he wins the presidency. Here, so here's a funny or sad twist depending on how you look at it. I mentioned Venezuela a second ago. So uh, one of the things Castillo has been doing is he has repeatedly publicly criticized. Nicolas Maduro, the president of Venezuela, and his handling of, of the situation in Venezuela. And the reason for that is because the collapse of Venezuela is a very obvious phenomenon to the Peruvian people. And it's also the, the, the Venezuelan collapse has been felt in the country of Peru economically. Uh, Venezuela has shed about 5 million refugees out of a population of 30 million since their economic catastrophe began. And about 1 million of those 5 million refugees have settled in Peru. It's, uh, it's so many people that the 1 million refugees from Venezuela now make up about 3% of Peru's total resident population. That's a pretty big inf influx. And this means that the, uh, the labor supply in Peru has grown enough to depress wages. So uh, socialism, man, it's always making wages go down, and not only by destroying capital, but also by artificially increasing the labor supply. So the Peruvian voters are, are very aware of the problems in Venezuela, and they obviously don't want their country to mimic or mirror those problems. So Castillo's talking trash about Nicolas Maduro and trying to distance himself from the Venezuelan style of governance. But I, I, I think, I think he's, he's not going to be able to do that beyond, you know, empty rhetoric. Um, he's, he's probably going to follow that nationalization and, and price control and economic planning model if he wins. So uh, what I want to do is I want to make a prediction. Um, I'm, I'm not going to make a prediction about whether or not Pedro Castillo wins the election on June 6th. I'm not, I'm not that confident that he will win. Um, runoffs tend to have uh, surprising results where the front runner can be, you know, uh, can lose in an upset, um, as opposed to like the initial phase of the election when there's so many candidates. So honestly, Pedro Castillo probably has a slightly less than 50% chance of, of winning the general election. But if he does, I predict that Pedro will try to nationalize many industries. I predict that he will try to implement numerous price controls. I predict that he will try to apply more red tape to the economy. I predict that he will try to expand government size and scope and expand spending on welfare programs. And he'll try to increase taxes. And uh, to the extent that he succeeds in doing those things, I predict that the Peruvian economy will suffer proportionately. So... Uh, his, you know, his, his economic policies, really, they, they resemble those of Venezuela and Cuba, not so much that of Bolivia and Argentina. So we're just going to have to wait and see. Uh, we're going to have to wait until June 6, 2021 and see whether or not he wins. Um, and then uh, we'll see if, you know, if he does win, we'll see if my predictions about his, uh, about his uh, policies, proposals, you know, come true. I hope he doesn't win. But then again, uh, I don't want anybody to win. I'm an anarchist. Thanks for watching. Peace out.